Hey, so today what I want to talk about is Trump's recent pick for Pam Bondi. I made a post about her, or post about her yesterday, talking about what I'm going to be doing today, which is going over her because I don't know anything about it. You know, just read the post I said. By the way, I'm going to do a slight dive into Trump's recent pick for Pam Bondi tomorrow, today. I don't know anything about her. I've heard that she is against 2A, which doesn't make me happy, but I'll be charitable and do a deeper dive than just reading posts. There's a lot of posts going on, and I, I want to be more charitable, do a little bit of a deep dive and try and figure out who she is and what the whole entire situation is going on there, because it's a little bit odd for a Republican to choose a person who's against 2A. Um, there's a couple posts, like these two posts, so I'll just quickly go over them. Um, they say the Second Amendment community says no to Pam Bondi as Attorney General. She is hostile to 2A and supports red flag laws. Some people down here pointing out how Bondi publicly defended Trump during the investigations. So she's a loyal person to him, which is good. And then they're just more going over the fact how she is just staunch or how they're they're going over the fact how they are staunchly for 2a but she's against it so therefore she's not good for their movement which makes sense but it's once again not really charitable because you have to think of it from a politics standpoint more than just a individualistic standpoint when it comes to politics obviously the individualistic points matter but Certain things are a little bit above others, which loyalty is better than disloyal people, right? <clears throat> and this person, they said, Pam Bondi is not pro 2A, and that concerns me greatly. And uh, someone gave a uh, more charitable view, saying, it is worth asking her about it. Lots of people would have considered it reasonable a few years ago, but have now woken up to what government oppression can do. And then they said, still don't trust them. Which, their ability, I mean, whatever. And then someone else is saying, what a downgrade from end the ATF gates. To which then they said yes. Which brings into the point of, or brings into question, like, were they for gates? Or just, are they saying that now because he was 2A, she's not. I'm assuming they were for gates, not only because of that, but definitely would surmount onto that. But I wanna wanna learn more about her and her opinions on red flag laws because a lot of people tend to just type in um, Pam Bondi 2A and then they'll read a bunch of like news sources say that she's against it and yada 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 yada. But perhaps we can take a different look at this. Uh, from Politico says that Trump picks a different Florida loyalist for Attorney General Pam Bondi. Man, that is a bright page. Is there a way I can make this dark? Damn. I'm just gonna read this and see if anything interests me and bring back. Okay, so, uh, just wanted to point out here. So, they said here that... <clears throat> The Attorney General post is perhaps the most important cabinet position in Trump's second term. He was sometimes frustrated by the two men who served in the role in his first term, and he is expected to lean on Bondi to help him wield the Justice Department against his political enemies. However, if we go down below, it then quotes Trump, for too long, the partisan Department of Justice has been weaponized against me and other Republicans. And then furthermore, he says, not anymore. Pam will refocus the DOJ to its intended purpose of fighting crime and making America safe again. A lot of problems that with, with people nowadays is they read what they, they, they read things as fact. They read something like this, wield the Justice Department against his political enemies, and they think that that is fact. They just read it, they don't think twice about it, they just move on. And I partially blame this on how illiterate the world is nowadays, because this is not in a quote. 
You know why it's not in a quote? Because if it was in a quote, they would get sued by Trump for defamation. It's not in a quote because Trump did not say this. This is, in a, this is completely an opinion by this article. Trump has said, though, that they're going to actually fight crime and make America safe again. Had nothing to do with going against Democrats, specifically. All he did was point out that the, the, the Department of Justice was weaponized against him and other Republicans, which is factually true. However, that is all he said. He did not say that he's going to do the reversal now to get an edge on them or anything like that. He was just making that statement. A factual statement at that. Another thing I realized is in this little section here is they said, if confirmed, Bondi will also be tasked with defending some of Trump's most controversial policies, particularly on immigration. You mean aliens? Uh, no, that's not immigration. That is called being illegal. Those are two different things. It's not, uh, it's not controversial to get rid of people who shouldn't be there. That is not controversial. That is what a country should be doing. That's literally the purpose of having a border. That's literally the purpose of having a country. If everyone is allowed everywhere, then what is the purpose of a wall? What is the purpose of a country? What is the purpose of a border? The whole entire purpose is these people are these people. These people are these people. They don't interact unless they do it legally. Because if they don't do it legally, then why do we call it this person and this person when they're just the same because there's no wall? I just made an analogy on my desk. You guys can't see that, but point being, walls are there for a purpose. Plain and simple. It's not controversial at all. These people are just stupid. All right, I'm going to continue reading and get back. <laughs> You know what? I lied. I should have not uh, cut anything because I'm not going to talk about this real quick. So just underneath the whole entire quote from Trump, it then says Gates, whose initial selection for the position was marred by the specter of a looming house ethics report on him, <gasps> praised Trump's pick. She will bring the needed reform to G to DOJ, he wrote in a post on X. Which, the reason why I bring this up is because from the earlier point, or from the earlier conversation from this person, they were saying, what a downgrade from Gates. Here's the thing. It is better that Trump has a loyalist who will back him up on his positions than have someone who is just going to be a... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Very strong. Very strong. Like, yes, he's very... He, Gates is a very strong... Uh, person to, for, for Trump to have picked. But Trump is at least picking people who are smart. She might be against 2A, but... If she's gonna back him up on what he wants to do for the country, then that is good. It just is. Trump didn't get rid of in his first term. I doubt he's going to do it in his second. I think, I think, I personally think, like, and a lot of people have also pointed out, oh, Trump is, was also not too much for 2A, which, hey, that might be true. But guess what? He still didn't get rid of them when he was in, when, in his first term. That would have been so politically, so PC of him to have gotten rid of But yet he didn't. So I doubt he's going to get rid of in his second term. As well, I doubt he's gonna actually get rid of it. I think, I think a lot of people are worrying about Pam Bondi just for the sake of worrying about her because she's against 2A, which that is reasonable to be scared of that. However, I doubt, I really doubt Trump is going to have an issue with the 2A. <laughs> that would be stupid. A Republican who's against that, that would actually be kind of stupid. He's, he's like, he's a Republican, but he's like, you know what? Get rid of it. Even though the Republicans are the main sector for the that kind of purchase. They're just a little bit stupid. <laughs> so, that would have happened, but, um... Alright, I'm gonna keep on looking. Wait, what? 
uh, liberal groups blasted the pick. Not being Matt Gates does not qualify you to be an attorney general of the U.S. A liberal is blasting. See, this is how you know the whole entire liberal movement is a, it's a bunch of malarkey. They're, they were so, oh my goodness, Trump made it so that another woman couldn't be president. <laughs> America's so misogynistic. But here we have liberals blasting the pick, saying not being Matt Gates does not qualify you to be an attorney general of the U.S. Did they, would they have rathered Matt Gates? That's a little bit confusing. Robert Weissman, the co-president of the liberal government watchdog, Public Citizen said in a statement, We should expect an Attorney General Bondi to serve as a Trump loyalist and attack dog at the expense of the department's, indepe a department's independence. What? <laughs> and integrity. Huh? Uh, like many... I'm not going to read the rest of this. A little bit... It's a little bit of uh, faux pas of me to not read the rest of it. Yes, it is. Um... But, I think, the thing I'm pointing out is, I don't think that Pam Bonnie is a bad choice. In fact, I actually think she is a really good choice for this. One, because the whole, most of the entire, uh, argument that liberals or Democrats or leftists, whatever you want to call them, had. The whole entire argument they basically had was Kamala woman, Trump man. Oh no, we voted for another man. Ah, country so misogynistic. Him getting a woman in to be in such a uh, high power immediately negates the fact that Trump is against women or something. Completely negates the fact that Republicans are in just in a hole against women. Because if we were, why would we have a woman in such a high power position? That doesn't make sense. So, it's good for optics as well. Because, once again, he gets he completely degrades the uh, left's uh, opinion or talking point of a misogynistic. Because well, we have a woman. We have a woman. What you gonna do against that argument? They're going to complain that she was second in command rather than first. Stupidity. I think that that is mostly all I wanted to say on this. I think she is a actually a very smart pick. She, under, she just by being a woman, undermines the left's attacking point against the Republican Party. Because she is a woman and it, it can't really say the right is misogynistic or Trump is sexist you can't even say that anymore because he, he he picked a woman that is like the least sexist thing to do and for a high power which is it's another level of how would you even accuse him of being a, 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 a misogynistic i think she's a smart pick i really doubt that trump is going to move to get rid of 2a that doesn't make any sense to me i understand that republicans are going to be scared about this fact and that is very reasonable you should be scared that they might want to do that but i really 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 doubt that that is actually going to happen i think it is a bunch of fear mongering and overall i think it is a good pick i think it's a good choice i think I'm excited to see what's going to happen in the coming years and all that. Actually, here's the interesting thing. I, I, wa I was watching a Tim Pool video earlier today. Um, something about uh, tariffs going on. Oh, yep. Trump announces 25% tariffs on Mexico and Canada unless they stop the illegal boarding border crossings. Can you believe that? Trump is going to fix Canada, and he is not even going to enter Canada. <laughs> uh, Trump is actively fixing Canada without ever coming here. <laughs> Isn't that surprising? Trump is such a push- uh, Trump. Trudeau is such a utter pushover of a leader that 
He doesn't even have to be interacted with. And Trump is changing Canada for the better. That is... That is... That is rich. <laughs> Anywho, I'm excited to see. Now there is... I, I just want to throw this out there because I don't know where else to put this out there. I saw... There's this Twitter... There's a, a Twitter X post. Ways ago at this point in time. Uh, like, November... Never... November 19th. I can't English. I have a problem with that today. But... I was, I was just scrolling and there were two posts and one of them was from Pierre Polyev and the other was from Krista Freeland. I have, I think it is the most funny thing ever. So Krista Freeland says, Pierre Polyev had a tough week after promising massive cuts to housing funding, cutting 750,000 new homes to be exact, and silencing his own MPs from advocating for their communities. And then she posts a photo and highlights this point, oh whoop de doo But there's no link. There's no link to the actual post. There's you have to go and find it yourself. You can't actively um, fact check her on what she has stated. You just have to take her for a word because, oh, she posted a clip and highlighted it in yellow. So therefore, it means she's right, right? But then you go on, on Pierre Polyev and he posts the title of a Toronto Sun paper and he actually links the column to it. He actually links the, the news document to what he is saying he doesn't even have to say it other news companies are saying what he is thinking all he has to do is put put a link whereas Krista Freeland has to come up with her whole entire whole entire shtick and then not even link it it's funny and then a lot of people are just talking about under Krista Freeland's thing saying cutting the accelerator housing program that built precisely zero homes you mean cut it and cut the salaries of the useless bureaucrats that run it. It's all just a sham. It's all just a sham. The entire Liberal Party in Canada is nothing but a sham. And I cannot wait until they're just gone. <sighs> I just can't believe that Trump is making Canada better without actually ever coming to this country. Has he stepped foot in Canada? <laughs> I know he, uh, he, there's a whole entire debate or debacle with him and Trudeau where Trump gave absolutely no leisure in knowing, in, in giving Trudeau the I don't care about you mindset. Gave no, no time in, in, no time wasted in making that apparent. But I don't know. I think it's just funny. Anywho, uh, that is basically what I all had to say today so hope y'all have a good rest of your uh, rest of your time have a good one